Hello everyone, so my name is Robert and today I'm going to try and show you some tips on how to beat XCOM Enemy Within on Plausible Iron Man. So uh, I'll leave some missions in the description, we're generally going to go over general tips and tricks and then we're going to go into some main strategy in a little bit. So uh, wish us luck. So when it comes to this game, picking a country to start is somewhat important. I think your best options are honestly Africa, uh, Asia, or North America. And the other ones are kind of lackluster. I like taking Asia though because it's a lot harder to cover than the other ones, so I have a lot less countries need to worry about losing. India. So uh, it's honestly just up to preference, but I find the easiest one's probably North America, so uh, that's probably gonna be your best shot. So this is a very specific tip. This is the only, only specific tip I'm gonna give you. All of them are gonna be general tips on how to do combat and stuff like that. But if you're gonna do a new campaign on Impossible Iron Man, just make sure your first mission isn't this map. I've never found a good way to tackle this map. This map is very chancy. Okay. Every other map in the 90s is doable. Way. This one's like impossible. So I yeah, just put it on. I'm going to leave a link in the description, I think, to this entire mission or to a bunch of these missions. I'm just going to leave a link so you guys can see how they were done completely if you really want to see the full mission done in Impossible Iron Man. I'm going to leave a bunch of links to like all the missions I'm going to do in this video. But uh, I, for the sake of just giving tips, I'm gonna, there's going to be a lot of editing in this. So uh, yeah. Just, just don't do this mission, guys. Save yourself a lot of pain that this mission's impossible. So I was telling you guys earlier about how urban missions are actually a lot easier. Uh, the reason is we can use the roost for advantage. I'll show you how to do it in a second. Strike one. This is central. Don't take any chances. On the move. Okay. Okay. So the most important move in the game you're going to learn is the Congo line, at least that's what I think everyone calls it. What this means is um, you basically send the first guy in your group, it doesn't matter who, the first guy in the group is the one designated to uh, shit like reveal fog of war. Everybody else just follows him, you know, like following his exact movements and tiles so that they don't reveal any, anything new that the first guy hasn't seen. Because you really don't want to run into more aliens after you've moved people. Because now you have half the ability to react to them. You don't want to run into, run into that kind of situation. So Congo line is very important for that, especially if you you're gonna, if you know there's an alien pod nearby. It's best to have everybody ready to fire rockets and do their things before you move the scout into their vision. That's what you want to do. So you want to always Congo line. You don't need to stay in cover. Cover is only really necessary when you're in contact. Otherwise, if you haven't revealed any pods, which is which is also known as a group of aliens, you don't actually need to be in cover. You're not going to get reprised for just being in the open. It's only when you're actually in combat with them, they've noticed you and they start spreading out and getting into combat information that you really get to be in cover. So the thing we want to do the most in these urban missions is get on the roof as fast as we can. And the reason is because if we can jump off the roof on any side of the building, so it lets us flank really easily when being on the roof. I usually like to have one guy on the ground taking aggro or everyone on the roof jumps down. I'm going to skip the most of this mission, but I'll show you the very end where it really uses to my advantage. Or I'll even show you a little bit of what we do here and use the roof to advantage using. You want to really be, keep track of how many aliens you're fighting at all times because you need, you need to actually, I would even consider writing it down so that you don't end up having a stray alien shoot you in the back while you're in transit to a new position. Um, other than the keeping track of the aliens, you want to also really watch where those my, those aliens are mind merging from. You don't want to use grenades if it only gets you one kill, unless the kill ends up being a double kill because the mind link between sectoids is going to get another sectoid killed. That's your whole goal on Impossible, is killing the back sectoids, the ones that are merging with the ones in the front. You don't want to kill the ones with the mo more health bar bars unless they're flanked. You mainly just want to spend your time shooting at the ones in the back and getting them with grenades. That's your whole goal here. So ruse make that a lot easier to close in on them. So in the next clips, we're probably going to show you a little bit of how we can use the ruse for advantage to get that objective done. So as you can hear, my soldiers have noticed that there's a guy behind us doing a little mind merge. You can hear it right now, and they told me the direction of which the uh, mind merge is coming from. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight up to the ledge. We're going to go in a straight B line for the ledge, and the reason is because they don't. The aliens might be on Overwatch, and they can't actually shoot us on a, when we go straight up to the ledge. The reason why is because they can only shoot you when they see you transitioning within their field of view, but they don't see any transition movement. They only see you enter the field of view. That one tile, which is the ledge, that's the only thing they see. So they don't see any movement. They can't Overwatch or they don't see movement. So we're gonna hit this guy with a grenade, we're gonna shoot him, because our height advantage is gonna make this so much easier. We'll take this guy out. You don't wanna stay on the ledge too long, and you don't wanna stay on the ledge at all. You wanna stay away from the ledge, because you don't wanna get shot at, and they can't see you if you're not on the ledge. The reason why I'm using the ledge right now is because I know there's no aliens gonna be able to reprise me from the ledge at that angle, since we're all on the building. 
but in general you don't want to stay on the ledge because half cover is just a death sentence in this game. Sectoids and all of their aliens have 75 aim and above, and half cover only apply, only gives you 20 defense. So there's that's gonna be a 55% chance of aliens hitting you right there if you're in half cover unless you're hunkered down. So half cover is really not that viable. Full cover is a lot better with its 40 40 defense. Now the sectoids have a 35% chance of you, still pretty high, but hey, it's barely nothing unless you hunker down. I always 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 will recommend hunker down against any kind of alien besides thin men and mutons because they'll grit with mutons if their aim chance is too low to hit you they'll just whip grenades those thin men if your their aim chance is too low they'll just spit acid on you or acid buff armor or spit poison on you and those will not get options the only exception is when you need care pass armor or enough health to take it you might actually prefer taking a poison than getting shot at one thing I think is worth mentioning is that in general in XCOM you want to engage the groups one at a time. There's usually on Impossible going to be like 8 to 12 aliens. Very difficult being 12. I think very hard being... Uh, not very difficult is 12. Difficult is I think 9 I th or 10. And then hard is going to be... If it's hard. they basically very difficult and uh, every, uh, every difficulty under it goes down by 2 aliens. I wanted to mention that you want to fight the aliens one group at a time, so that's why you have explosives. The explosives are going to be meant to help you take out those first groups without spreading out too much, since you won't need a flank when you blow up their cover. But the last groups are usually going to be running out of explosives, and that's okay, because those first groups are the ones you really need to get rid of without moving too much, since you don't want to alert any other groups to your position. So, main goal of XCOM is use your explosives at the start, get rid of their numbers, and then near the end, whenever there's only one group left, you can really take your time spreading out as much as you want. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. And I'm going to show you some kind of roof trick. This is one of my favorite roof maneuvers. It's where you open the door and get their attention with one guy, but they don't know anyone else is on the roof. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to get them to set up against our man down here. Emil Campbell, I can't even see his name properly. But we're going to send him behind this ha full cover. And there's another trick I want to show you. There's another trick. I don't even know how many tips we're doing here. But what happened is, since he has a full cover on his left and his right, and he's on full cover, they can't see him. And that's going to be super, super important for Impossible Iron Man. You need to cut vision. The reason being, well, you don't want to get shot at all. And because full cover can break in this game. If you're really unlucky, your full cover can break if they're shooting you. And that, that like, makes the full cover redundant if you're hungry and third your cover breaks. So, cutting vision is going to be super important because, yeah, you don't want to get shot at. That's basically the simplicity of it. It's pretty simple. Another trick I want to show you guys here is that, and you know how I mentioned there's no transition tile before the field of vision? Well, if you can do the same thing with jumping off a roof, which is really nice, since we're going to jump into full cover here, but they don't see any transition. They literally just see them enter their field of view. They can't get any overwatch on our guy here. So because of that, Leroy? Yeah, Leroy can get him. So, jumping off roofs, going up to ledges, doing anything like that only puts you in their field of vision. It doesn't actually let, let them see you move within their field of vision, which is really nice. I mean, unless they can see on the, onto the roof, they won't see you running up to the ledge, which is really nice. So we're going to keep abusing that, and we're going to keep going for the flanks, because they have no idea we're on the roof. No longer a threat. Good work out there, Strike One. If I may, Commander. What was that? Hostile spotted. Negative damage. So I've had a few of my friends actually ask me first, like, hey Robert, so when do you not take the shot? Well, the thing is, your rookies all are going to have really horrible aim at the start of the game. They're going to have 65 aim, unless you're using, um, you know, using, unless you're using modifiers like, uh, not create equally or hidden potential in which they start with different stats so they could potentially have like disastrously low will but decent aim or horrible aim and good will so that's up to you i don't find that one's actually i don't find that one unfair because once you start losing rookies which you will once you start losing rookies you might end up with lots of trash rookies which i do end up having at one point but um half these missions i've done with hidden potential slash not create equally and then the other half I've done just normal vanilla i find uh in general, you're just gonna take the shot. If they're not in cover, you always take the shot. If they're um, if they're in cover, just never take the shot. Basically, unless you're really desperate, or you or you it's a uh, or you're gonna double nade the guy, or you have some surefire way of killing him without any reprisal. The way you want to play XCOM in general is you want to kill everything without being able to get shot back at. You just want to kill. Like you want to kill them all without any, any, anyone firing back at you. That's your main goal. You know you're doing well in this game. 
Especially, like, this is going to happen around the mid-game. You know you're going to be doing well in this game when you can wipe out entire alien groups without actually having them fire back at you. That's when you know you're in the good, you're in the good zone, your tech's up to date, everything's up to date. When you can just wipe out enemies. It's, it also depends on what classes you bring. So you want to rush two heavies as soon as you can. Double heavies makes the game so much easier, especially for that second terror mission. If you have a mech and two heavies, and if you're lucky, you've had this happen once. I had a, an assault with close combat specialist by that point. The, the terror mission, the rest of the game is just guaranteed. You're basically won the game. So that's gonna be your main goal for first month. Get two heavies as fast as you can. Don't necessarily need it, but try and get them. Also, don't be afraid to double grenade the guys who are important. The reason I mentioned that 5 for bar is usually going to be your safety cushion, by the way, is because that means you can run Overwatch from Sectoids at the start of the game without worrying about being killed. They can only do 2-4 to four damage, unless they crit you, which they can't on Overwatch, or when you're hungry, which is super important to know. Hunkering down half cover is viable, and you will not die if you have 5 hit points. You'll just have a chance of being panicked and getting hit, though it is kind of low. Um, 5 hit points is the cushion for Overwatch. You can run Overwatch and be fine with one one Overwatch. But crits can still one-shot you, so that's why Hunker Down so good. Not only because it reduces their hit chance to 1% in full cover, but because um, you can't be critting it. You can't be crit. It's very unlikely you're going to get hit by 1%, though it has happened if you watch my Impossible Iron Man series. <laughs> Lost my heavy to 1% chance, so yeah. Personal pain. Man. Though, you do want to set up in cover, uh, heavy cover that's unbreakable. Examples of unbreakable heavy cover is going to be already destroyed cars. I mean, just cars don't are aren't they are indestructible in that your cover won't break, but I mean it will explode in your face. So that's that's something you got to watch out for. Cover exploding in your face. You also got to watch out for. Just don't use half cover if you don't really can. if you really have no choice hunker in it, but you really don't want to use as much as you can. So the the optimal choices for cover is a blown up car so you don't have to worry about moving or those alien pod things i don't know what they are they're giant steel green alien pods you'll recognize them they're really hard to miss those things don't break those are two things or this bus on this map for example the bus doesn't break there's a few things that won't break you'll probably be able to figure it out everything else seems to be breakable other than uh terrain the terrain is unbreakable so if you have like if you're hanging fighting in the mountains those rocks are breakable but not actual ground if that makes any sense like the bedrock whatever you're standing on another thing worth mentioning is you once you've gotten most of the aliens on the map just assume there's gonna be like 8 to 12 it depends on the difficulty uh then you can really start going for wide flanks and that's what you want to do go for wide flanks because usually by the last aliens you're out of grenades out of explosives so one thing you can do is set one guy in unbreakable cover to just continuously hunker, get their attention, let them shoot at him, let them position against him while everyone goes out around really wide around their backs. That's going to be your main goal for the last pod, is going real ridiculously wide, and like going in their field of view so that they don't know you're setting up behind them. That's going to be your goal for the last groups. But uh, yeah, make sure his cover is unbreakable or else he might just be flapping in the wind there if his cover breaks. Uh, then go for the the mine merger. That's the thing. That's your goal. That's your goal for game for a blot of the mission. Okay. Commander. When it comes to dealing with the geoscape, Commander. you want to build a satellite in the first month, and then usually just start excavating things. You don't actually want to build anything necessarily. Commander. And one thing You're I'm going to tell you too is if you get a mission that's really ridiculously screen. difficult that you're not ready for, like this, for example, like Peter Van Dorn's so like target extraction, you can just skip it. I would honestly say just skip missions if it's going to get your team killed. So what you need to do is just survive as those team. You don't actually need to win everything. You just need to survive until your technology goes up and until your soldiers are high enough ranked to have good enough aim for them to be reliable. That's going to be your whole goal. I just skipped the Peter Van Dorn mission. I've skipped bomb disposals in month one. You just, just survive. That's your whole goal. Just get sergeants. Survive once you get sergeants. Once you get next another squad size. Continuously load rookies into that squad until you get double heavies. It makes life so easy. And you don't necessarily need to bring snipers unless you think you're good. If you get double heavies, then sure, bring a sniper. Because snipers do become ridiculously strong and you win through attrition if you have snipers. So just be be ready for that. But snipers, squatty snipers are generally lackluster in the first month of the game. Unless you feel very confident about your team and how you're, what your mission, what your Touching mission down. types are and stuff like that. So yeah. You'll be Oh, God damn it. Ah, Tips for UFO Moving missions, by out. the way. If you get the outsider, just kill him right away. His aim is stupid. It's like 100. I think it's over 100. 
So this guy's gonna hit you no matter what, unless you're hunger down. He still has a 20% chance to hit you in hunger down. So just kick his butt. You really don't want to deal with this guy. And don't alert him too early, because he calls all the aliens on the map to his position, so you're gonna get overrun, since you're gonna have every alien on the map knowing exactly where you are. So just, uh, just blow him up. You don't want to deal with him. He's, he's horrible. He's, he's an asshole. He's not nice. He, he, he shoots you on sight, doesn't even let you like, come on board his ship, he's not Chalk hospitable. Up another one. Kick him off, kick him off your planet, there you go. Now when it comes to the classes in the game, if I had to say which ones I thought were most powerful, I would honestly say the Heavy is the most powerful and epithetic soldier in the game. Other than the Heavy, I think your Sniper is going to be your second most important because the Heavy's actual weapon aim falls off, like you can't really hit anything, but if damage is still very devastating with primary gun. Though, I will say, there's no expendable soldier. I would say, if anything, though, the least valuable soldier would probably be your support. Support's probably the least valuable out of all the all the soldiers. I, I'm fine with losing supports. Rookies are expendable, so you actually do want to bring a rookie or two on your first missions. Not only because you want to try and get more heavies, but because rookies, if you really have no choice but to do something risky, make sure your rookie is one that does it. Because they are expendable over your veteran troopers. And they're, they're pretty cheap to, to replace, Moving not to too, too bad to replace. Unlike your veteran troops who need lots of missions under their belts. Rookies literally like what, 20 bucks or something. It's pretty, pretty cheap. $20. It's one green move. Another thing I should mention. You almost always want to hunker over Overwatch. Overwatch isn't very reliable, and it's, it tends day, to get your guys killed. Whereas, like, Hunter lets them have a 1% chance of getting hit. So, against anything besides Thin Men and Mutons, you, you should use Hunker, because nothing can really fight that. So, in the middle of month one, you usually want to get your first meld. You want to research it, like, right away as soon as you can, because you can get your cybernetics facility done in the first month, and you can start building mechs. You just want one mech. All I needed was one mech to beat all my impossible Iron Man games that I won, so I won like three times. All you need to do is get that one mech with the flame sword to save you from the chrysalids in month the two. That's your whole goal. Just get that mech commander. by month two and you'll be fine. It makes life so easy. They're also a free tank, so if you make a mistake, they'll take one shot for free. They can survive a thin men crit to the face. They can survive it just barely. But yeah, they're basically a buffer. They're like, hey, I screwed up. Let my mech get shot once, because enemies always go for the easiest to hit target. So that's always going to be your mech, basically. So just uh, just know that. So if, if there's one guy who's kind of flapping in the wind in half cover, say you did a risky maneuver, then don't bother hungering anyone else, because they're just going to focus fire on the guy in half cover. Might as well just take advantage of the fact that he's going to get shot, and use that to uh, put as much firepower as you can, instead of going defense on the, everyone else while that guy gets left behind and shot up. Laser guns are also okay, but you're only going to be putting them on your assaults and your supports at the start of gaming rookies. So I wouldn't recommend rushing laser guns. I'd honestly rush mechs, maybe even carapace second, and then lasers. And the way you want to designate your satellite we're like we're going to do here is in the last few days, like the last day before the uh, council report, complete. you want to go to your situation room and go, hey, all right, who am I going to save? Uh, who am I going to save in my group? So you'd be so in my case, I wanted to save the United like uh, the United States. I wanted to save uh, I think it's Mexico. Let's see here. I don't remember. I'm looking at the fact of fast footage. But you want to save countries in which you want to get the continent bonus. So there's no way I'm going to get the uh, European continent bonus. There's already like two Satellite European countries there that are freaking out. Capacity. So might as well just save North America because it would be required. nice to have half price Incoming on the airships. It's fine. You will lose a lot of countries in the first Much month. But usually by second month, maybe you'll lose one, two. Members. And then by from then on, you usually lose any countries. So that's that's normal. You'll lose this countries. Does in the not bode well you'll lose for a lot of countries. Commander. The whole goal is ma These mainly choosing which continent bonuses you want and who you're willing to give up. Concern. And from now on, because I, do, I can't get the continent You've bonus from Europe, I'm not afraid of just letting Europe kind of slip away and losing those countries. I'm going to prioritize all the other However, ones first we still before I continue to save Europe because they're not funding any more. Yeah, that's right. Give me money. Current enemy status at the site is unknown. Yes, yeah, so the floaters, they're kind of countered by Hunker, like kind of, because they can fly up behind you, but as long as you're explosives, that'll be fine. But uh, you really don't want to let them shoot you, because their aim's actually very high, it's kind of deceptive, it's like 75. So it's like a sectoid thing. I think it's a bit higher than uh, I think uh, Thin Men have like 85, so Thin Men need to die, they need to die at all costs. Floaters too, just, just, just kill, kill floaters. Floaters are freaking dangerous, so don't let them go lit, they kill everything. Sectoids are like meh, they're somewhat dangerous, they're pretty dangerous. But these guys are just like death, so you wanna you wanna kill the yeah, crap out of these guys. Okay. Seekers too. Seekers are dumb. Show you how to deal with seekers in a second. These guys just just blow them up. Just blow them up. No, no one likes this guy. No one likes them. Eat this. Heavy's weird. 
Now, for dealing with Seekers on this difficulty, you want to huddle as a group and just wait. So, I have Sectoids in the middle fighting me, but I ran away. I pulled back really far and I'm just going to watch as a group and wait for the Seekers, because I want to fight Seekers and Sectoids at the same time. So, you're just going to huddle together and keep shooting them. That's your whole goal. Just huddle together on Overwatch and just keep killing them. They become impossible to hit if you don't have shotguns, though. Like, so, you really okay. want to make sure you have some kind of shotguns, because they have, they have a flying bonus and they have a... Uh, you're just overall hard to hit because we also have built-in defense and the guys just suck at aiming, so. We're gonna see, we're gonna see seeker number two. You have like two seconds. I know he's out here. Come on. Come on, buddy. I know you're out there. Like the sectoids. There's sectoids out there. So try and get your first meld in month one if you can't. I'm, I'm scared for you, but just try to. Month two, you should have it. It's still doable, the terror mission with two heavies. It's a lot easier with two heavies. It's, still, it's really doable. But if you don't have two heavies, hopefully you have a I hate Seekers. So if I was to give you any like final tips, I would say try to get Psionics as soon as they get Muton Elites. Try to have laser weapons as soon as you can, Moving. but if you if you can't, if you if you go for the mech first, then probably you won't the care pass armor because you will have enough firepower as long as you have rockets, light machine guns, and shotguns. Those are gonna be your really big damage weapons. Those are the ones that are gonna deal the reliable damage you need to get those huge health bars down. Your assault rifles kind of do uh, peanuts. They're not like the most reliable, but uh, yeah, That's if you stick with this, here. you should be fine. You can get plasma grenades as soon as you can to so plasma grenades are good because they're AOE bigger and explosives are enough to actually build down health. Um, other than that, that don't be afraid to skip missions. Don't be afraid to. Don't be afraid to. If you really ship. need to, skip a I'd mission or even or, like even better be than skipping unstable. a mission would be to go to something easier even if it would like, make you lose an entire country. It's actually worth it to not lose your guys. But let's say do a, a moderate mission rather than a very difficult one because your squad's not up to it. And uh, also, you almost always want to go for engineers. Like engineers are just like the best thing ever. So in the Geoscape, just go for engineers as often as you can. Um, other than that, I think that's basically it for XCOM. You know, it's, it's not much more else to say. Team mods not really worth it. Maybe light like game. The good one is the one that stops you from getting mind controlled or or sigh anything. It just stuns you for a turn to get mind controlled. That one's really good. Other than that, maybe bioelectric skin, mimic the whatever the one. What is it? Uh, yeah, mimetic skin. It's very, very good though, the one that makes you invisible. That one is kind of broken actually, because you can get your squad sites and just snipe away while you stay invisible in their, in their field vision. You want to, once you get ghost armor, titan armor and stuff, you basically win the game. Care pass, you're Looks like pretty, really pretty much set to. Uh, try to get your sergeant so as soon as, as you scratch. can, because you do want, you do want uh, to be able to get that squad size upgrade. You want to get those will bonuses if you want them. They're, I, find they're I don't find them super necessary. This gorilla, not gorilla attack of school, it's actually not too. All those um, officer training school things, they're not necessarily like super necessary. But I think the one thing that is necessary that you guys shouldn't overlook is going morning, into Commander. the foundry We're after doing experimental warfare research. Once you build the foundry, so which is a, like the, little, the foundry building, which lets you get the little upgrades, you want to get the upgrade that lets your guys carry two items. And generally, the second item, other than being, you want one utility metal. item, such as a grenade or something like that. Metal. Pretty much just grenades. I mean, eventually you'll go to healing and ghost grenades and stuff. But you want to just be using a utility item and a health item. So, like a nanofiber vest or chitin plating, preferably chitin plating when you can get it. Um, ghost grenades are really broken. Supports can hold two once they get deep pockets. Heavies can hold two once they get grenadier. Deep pockets is really uh, not, uh, not, not deep pockets. Ghost grenades are really broken because they essentially give you a free turn. If you run everyone in the open but huddle them together, take free shots in the open. You can then have the last guy with the ghost grenade ghost grenade your whole team. They all become invisible. The aliens get confused, run around, waste time, and you got a free turn. Of free shots. They're really good. So um, with that, I think I'm gonna leave you guys. Hope you guys get some success in the future. I'm gonna leave the descriptions, not description. I'm gonna leave links in the bottom for missions on Impossible Iron Man. Probably gonna add more during the week, so you guys can see some first-hand stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed so far. I would honestly recommend if you guys like this series, you should go watch some Beagle Rush. He has some very good videos on how to play some Impossible Iron Man. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked it, leave a like. If you disliked it, do a dislike. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. All right, see you then.